Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Julie Sawchuk. You're here for another episode of Building Without Barriers. Thank you for joining me. And I have a special guest with me here tonight. Well, virtually with me here tonight, Dr. Rosemary Rossetti. And we are going to be hanging out in our kitchens. Um, Dr. Rosemary Rossetti is all the way in Ohio, and I'm here in southwestern Ontario. And you're here to learn about accessible kitchens. And we are just going to kind of roll with it and see um, how many questions people have to ask. And I'm going to start by by showing you my favorite place in the kitchen. But I first want to give uh, Rosemary an opportunity to introduce herself. So go for it. Well, thank you. I'm in my wheelchair in Columbus, Ohio at my home, the Universal Design Living Laboratory. This is the top rated universal design home in North America, earning three national universal design certifications. My husband and I led the design team. We had over 200 corporations and volunteers to help us in building it that were sponsors. We've lived here since May of 2000. 12. Um, so you're going to have an opportunity firsthand to see me in the kitchen and to understand why we designed it this way. We had a wonderful design team to help us. I also wanted you to meet my husband, Mark. Mark led the design team, was the general <laughs> contractor and the builder. And if universal design is going to work, it's going to work for us. As you can tell, he is a tall man. That was <laughs> slick, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Mark and I have been married now for 26 years. He is six foot four, and I am four foot two from my wheelchair. I have a spinal cord injury, and so I don't stand that often, but I can stand if I hold on to the counters, and then I'm five oh. foot one. So the uh, home was designed with universal design principles um, and making sure, that, of course, that it suited both of us as we intend to stay here for our lifetime. Here we've got Lara Swift saying, hi, Mark. <laughs> that was a great introduction, uh, Rosemary, thank you. And thanks, Mark, for being uh, part of the camera crew. And um, it's really, it's, it's interesting. I'll give you a little bit of backstory to our viewers because when we were designing this home, um, I guess four years ago now, we had no idea what we were doing, like clueless. We did not have a design team um, like you did. We, we had an architect um, who had some experience with uh, accessibility, but not having done a completely accessible home before. And of course, I'm scouring the internet and, and what did I find but Rosemary's book. And that was very helpful. Um, I downloaded that and uh, we, we used your checklists and it, it was a great resource for us. So do you have a copy of it there? We do have a copy. We have cases of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the Universal Design Toolkit. It is available from Amazon as a printed copy. And you mentioned you downloaded yours. It is a mm -hmm. PDF and comes with 16 videos. And that's at universaldesigntoolkit.com. Um, you can also get a free chapter, which is a list of the universal design features in our home, room by room, at the website on the screen um, a little later. It's udll.com. Um, so if you're interested in the book, um, you can go to udll.com, get the free chapter so that you can take a virtual tour of our home using the free chapter to see the universal design features uh, and pay attention to the kitchen. That's the one that's got most of them. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So um, our viewers, I'd love to know where you are watching from. And if you wanted to start dropping any questions that you have in the chat, I'm gonna take my fancy dancy camera stand and turn around because I wanna start at my favorite spot in the kitchen, and that is here, my butcher block worktop. And this is where everything happens um, for me in the kitchen because I work here. Um, this is my chopping block. Obviously, I'll use a cutting board on that surface, but it's also like the, um, the hub 
of the kitchen. We have a couple of stools that slide, well, you can see one of them right under, get under there. And so where a lot of families would have like a breakfast bar where you pull up some stools and you're sitting up tall, this is our breakfast bar. And so, you know, it becomes a homework station. When my desk in my office gets too messy, I just bring my laptop out here and have a little change of scenery. It's exactly just enough clearance that I can get my fingers between my knees and the, the lower surface. And it allows me to sit at a good height to have, you know, proper posture and um, not be typing up here if I'm working or not be chopping up here. What's your favorite place to work in your kitchen? Well, let me um, turn this little um, gadget around here and let you see our cooktop. You know, my name is Rosemarie Rossetti. You probably think I'm an Italian, and I am 100% Italian. So would you not expect me to be cooking some spaghetti at some point in time? <laughs> yes. Um, so, so what I'm going to show you is one of my favorite appliances is this in-counter steamer and pasta cooker. It came with various trays, so I want to steam things, and I can steam things in this tray. If I uh, also another steamer tray, depending on what it is. The other day, I had twelve ears of corn in here and steamed them so that I could blanch them, put them in ice water, and stick them in the freezer. Right. Uh, so I just have a, a pot filler here. I was just going to say, I see your pot filler and I'm jealous of it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the filler uh, takes care of things, putting the water in, it then uh, can be set to boil. Once the water is boiling, I have another wire basket that I simply put in there with the uncooked spaghetti. So there we go, immersing in the hot boiling water. The pasta is done. I take it out and let it drain a little bit, put it in a serving bowl, and then I turn this knob and the water drains right here. Oh, wow. When I saw this, this uh, appliance, I just said, Mark, I've got to have this. It made life so much easier and safer for um, me to be independent as I cook mm -hmm. a lot of meals. It is uh, a part of a, um, a trio. So we have a cooktop here and a cooktop here. The controls are out front so that I don't have to lean across. I've got plenty of knee space underneath, and I've got the ability to turn the light off and on as well as the fan off right. and on. Yeah, right, yeah, right in front of you. So yeah. we've got, uh, I just want to tell you who we've got watching here. We've got um, Denise from Ohio, um, somebody from Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, we've got Lara in Kitchener. Mindy, who does, uh, she's a PT that does home modifications for older adults, and Jane from Georgetown in Texas. So thank you for being here, ladies and gentlemen. And um, so in contrast to Rosemary's cooktop, I'm going to show you my cooktop. I'm just going to flip this, um, flip this around here. There we go. So this is now on the opposite side of where you just were. So there's my cooktop. Uh, again, roll under, five burner again with the controls on the right hand side. Um, and I don't have a magic pot filler or a magic drain, which I wish I did. But what I do instead is I will slide my pot across to my prep sink over here, which is also um, a roll under space for me to work at. The thing I wish I had done differently here is a sink that's not quite as deep as this um, for, safe, for safety reasons, obviously, but it just has a, a single lever. So it's kind of my pot filler. I'll, I'll, I'll fill the pot there and then slide it across or just carry it across and put it onto the cooktop. So that's, um, that's the way things work here. Now, my range hood, if I tilt this up a little bit, my range hood does have a remote control, but I never actually installed it and I can reach, but usually I just use um, like whatever cooking utensil I've got in my hand because they're just push buttons. So it's not like I have to turn a knob or anything. So they're um, pretty easy, easy to use that way. So that's, that's my cooktop. A little bit different from your cooktop.
one of the things that I was very um, passionate about, I guess, was doing everything as drawers instead of um, instead of cupboards as much as possible. Um, and we don't have any upper cabinets. Do you have any upper cabinets in your kitchen? I do, but they were mounted at a height difference. Normally, the cabinets would be higher in our wall cabinets. These have been mounted about four inches lower than what would be standard. So I can reach the bottom shelf of the wall cabinets. And I have some uh, pull-down units so that the shelves come down to me. Right. Can you show us one of your pull-down units? I and sure while, while you're maneuvering, um, we've got Gary from Idaho, Betty from London, Ontario, Deb, um, Deb, thank you, from Texas. Um, Mayamu from Toronto. Yay, making dinner for family and watching our presentation. Joy, thank you, Joy, for being here. Awesome. Okay, let's see your cabinet. This is the cabinet, and you can um, see how it was installed. We put it up on the top shelf. Now, I told you I could stand as long as I hold on to things. Oh, look at you. So I just grab this handle and just pull things down so that now I can reach some of the items that I couldn't reach in the past. And it's really simple. It's just a one-handed maneuver, and up it goes again. And if somebody wasn't able to stand, is there um, like a reacher kind of device that you could use to pull that handle down? Yes, definitely. No. You could have put an extension, either a ribbon, a cord, a piece of right. leather, right. any type of handle to reach that instead mm -hmm. of me standing. Um, do you have a drop zone right there in front of you? A drop stone. A drop zone. I see a, a handle. Zone. Is that a drawer right in front of you under the microwave? Oh, is... this, these are my deep drawers. For sure. Oh, I see. Oh, the, the, the handles are high. Oh, look at those drawers. Yeah, we've got some um, great handles throughout the bathroom, the kitchen, everywhere. All the handles are these D style. Um, mm -hmm. So we love the deeper drawers. It's easier to get things out. And it's oh. nice. So I was just asking you whether that was a drop zone, just because of the um, the location of the handle. It made me think that I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. This is my this is my drop zone. Um, I'm just going to flip you around here. Again. So this is the I, I call it a drop zone. I don't know if it has an official name or not, but it's where things that are coming and going from the fridge go. So mm. this is our wall fridge, full length fridge, no freezer here, the freezer's in the pantry. So when I'm pulling things out of the fridge, then, you know, I can stack them. I'm just pulling random ingredients out of the fridge. I can stack them here or likewise cleaning up instead of leaving the fridge door open the whole time. Um, it also acts as heaven forbid, a secondary work surface if all of the rest of my counters are covered with crap, then this can be like the sandwich making station or something like that. Does that, does that ever happen? And then um, the, other, the other thing I do is when I'm baking, that is where the hot stuff goes. So I'll pull out um, a cooling rack. And then when I open my oven, side swing oven door, I'll, uh, pull, oops, open the door, pull out my muffins, and then drop them right here. Obviously, that is tricky if it's something heavier. I'll get some assistance with that. But I, the reason why I put it there instead of below is if I had done this below the oven, you have to compensate for the depth of whatever dish it is that you're pulling out of the oven because you still want to be able to close the door. So if you're, um, like you've got a cake that's deep, for example, you don't want to be knocking off the top of your cake when you uh, are knocking your cookies and sliding them off onto the floor, right? So um, you must have a pullout somewhere in your kitchen. Well, let's look at my oven in comparison. Oh, also. sure. Yeah, let's we've got Paul here from Calgary, um, an Accessible renovator, most interesting conversation. Thank you, Paul. Another Paul from Stevensville in Montana. 
And Sherry is here also from Atlanta, formerly Chicago. Awesome. Let's see your oven. All right. I've got the side hinge oven also. It's a must for accessibility. Yes. But we've done it underneath the center island. So when I take something out, I take it out of the oven and I put it right up here on, on top, top of the uh, center island, which is about 42 inches. This is the height that Mark likes when he's doing salad preparation. Um, I'm the cook in the family. He loves to chop food and make salad and, and assist me. He does most of the cleanup. So we decided to put the ovens side by side. So here is the, uh, the convection oven. And then we've got the microwave combination convection oven right next to it. Oh, I see. So anytime we're taking out food, we then can put it here on the uh, quartz countertop. Right. And do turbots here to make sure that I'm not uh, damaging the countertop. When there's something like 500 degree pizza, I'll put it right. on the little trivet so that it isn't um, being any harm to the countertop. But we actually have three different heights on this countertop. I'm just looking at that. And you're now starting to see the 30 inch high, which is where I do my food preparation and chopping. So this one's got the knee space for me and it's got seating. Probably five or six people can be seated around here. Um, it's a great work surface when I'm making um, a lot of different ingredient type of products. Like one of the things I'm doing is zucchini muffins. And there's so much that goes into that, that this counter is just full of ingredients as I'm mixing and chopping. Uh, that, the, third, the third height is um, also available, and that's more of a traditional, it's a 35 inch height. Um, so this, this whole area of the center island is massive and accommodates everybody that comes here. It's yes. a great place to have um, buffets, and family reunions, and that food can be at various height levels. And people can work with me and Mark in the kitchen at whatever height they're comfortable with. Absolutely. Now, Rosemary, there's a question for you. Did you consider countertops that were adjustable in height? We did, and we thought we'd be fighting over that. He would want them <laughs> high, I would want them low. And we looked at them and said, they're more trouble than they're worth. We have a maintenance problem. They're a little more costly. They make some noise. If I'm the cook and he's the cleanup guy, let's accommodate both of us. So around the perimeter where I was at the cooktop and the sink, those are 34 inches from the ground to the top. And that was a good compromise. We've both been happy. Mm -hmm. That's, it's interesting that, um, you know, compromise has been a big part of the decisions that you were making because it was the same for us, my husband is also tall. He's 6'3". So you can see where my my favorite spot ends. His favorite spot begins. And that, that's that higher counter height. And I just wanted to um, wave some of my zucchinis at you because <laughs> it has been the year of the zucchini. I tell you, I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. So we also have multiple counter heights, and so I've, I've shown you those two here, and then um, in the other side of the kitchen, you can see the dishwashing sink um, to my left, and then again, my cook, the roll under cooktop and my, my prep sink height there as well. One thing I wish we had done a little bit lower is the dishwashing sink. It's at 36. I wish we had done it at 35. Um, because I do sometimes wash dishes. Um, it's not my favorite activity. I much prefer the cooking and the baking and that somebody else can do the cleanup. So that's kind of the way we roll around here, but um, you know, sometimes I do wash. <laughs> um, so Paul is asking, would you mind sharing how you suspended the 30 inch counter? Oh, as you don't see support posts, yes. Oh my goodness, this is Mark's, uh Private. He said we could dance on this. He has so much steel underneath. He's going to show it to you now. Oh, look at that. You want to talk to him, Mark? This was a, I'm holding the camera so you can't see me, uh, but this was a custom uh, fabrication that was done out of one by one steel, which we then screwed to the center 
cabinet there, which is then attached to the floor. Uh, the quartz material is on top, which is um, inch and a half. So it's really heavy. Uh, I was always concerned about, uh, you know, when we had tours here several years ago, of people leaning on it or setting their kids on and stuff. And we've had <laughs> zero issues with it. Right. So yeah, it's and worked out really well. My, um, my island end has two legs. And I don't find that they're in the way. Um, and they're just wooden wooden posts attached to the bottom of a maple butcher block. So pretty straightforward. Um, I've got another question for you. Um, do you still recommend the raised dishwasher for new construction? I do. It's been great. Everyone who's been here on tour, we've had... 3,200 people here before the pandemic and everybody that sees it says it is so much more convenient. Let me show it. Yes, you. please show us. Maybe you can get a sense, uh, Mark's gonna lower that down so that you can get a sense of how high it is off the floor. It's about 16 inches from the bottom of the dishwasher to the floor, where we actually have a drawer underneath to store all of our dish towels. So is that a standard dishwasher that you've just installed yes. at a higher height? Yes, it's a standard dishwasher. We just made a, a design decision to put it in and it has worked out well. I think Mark has used it um, more in terms of hours, he's the cleanup guy. So he's loading it and unloading it. He doesn't have to lean down as far since it is now raised. And I've had no problems um, because it is a little higher. I can still reach all the shelves in it. Right. See, I just have a regular height dishwasher installed in a regular um, location. Let me bring you with me here. Well, you can see it there. Nothing, nothing particularly fancy about the dishwasher at all, actually. Um, but I can see that having it raised would make the bottom drawer easier to get at. If I do load the dishwasher, I generally just am loading things into the top, the top rack of the dishwasher. I pull it out and I leave the rest for the other cleanup crew. <laughs> Great. I was wondering if you had toe kicks in terms of um, an area for your wheelchair and your footrest and your feet. Do you have those too? So we did plan um, toe, cook, toe kicks and you can see um, behind here in the, the pull out where the garbage can is beside the sink. But if I were to do it again, I don't think I would um, because what, for me, it, like I do get my toes under there, but it doesn't really have an impact on my functionality in the kitchen because I'm not reaching up above my counters. Um, and it actually has, uh, because they're taller than a regular kick plate, it takes space out of the drawer that's in the space above. So I think I would do that differently next time and just have a regular toe kick um, or I would do it much taller um, so that I could get not just my toes under there, but also the front, um, the front fork of my wheelchair as well. Mm -hmm. What did you do? I've got a nine by six toe kick and Mark will take this over so that we can actually demonstrate. It's easier to show and, and uh, right. tell. There I am with a nine by six toe kick. You can see how much closer I get to the counter. Which yes. Extends my reach so that when I'm cutting in this position, I don't have to be sideways to be um, ergonomically not correct. I can mm -hmm. now face the counter with my knife and do my chopping in this position. Versus and I think my, my other house, I always had to be sideways. Right, and then my prep area is is right clear underneath. So I, I roll right up and underneath the counter so that I am also front facing um, and that's mm -hmm. my prep area beside the sink. So if I'm doing 
mucky stuff and I want to be right, be able to wash my hands before I put them back on my, on my push rooms. That's, that's the space that I work in. Um, does, does the fact that you do get onto your feet make, make a difference in that decision when you decided those kick plates? No, the toe kicks were important so that I didn't um, make nicks in the cabinets like yeah. my other house. Right. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, there's a few spots that I have, that I have uh, marked up, but um, mostly it's, it's over here where I make coffee. <laughs> and this is one of the things that's, um, why I put my coffee maker in this particular spot is so that you can see where you're pouring the water. And I think it's something that people don't necessarily think about until they're themselves in a seated position and they're, they're wondering, you know, am I actually pouring the water in the space where it's supposed to be poured or am I randomly pouring water and then, it, you know, it's going to end up all over the counter. I did that at a cottage one time. Um, that we were renting and I couldn't see where I was pouring the water because the counter was high and I was like, oh, I'm not entirely sure where the water's going and it just went psh, all over the countertop. So yeah, appliance, small appliances and thinking through, okay, what are the small appliances that I have and where are those things going to go? That was yeah. key. I've got a unique storage solution for all those small appliances. Let me show that to you. This is a timbre door, and inside I've got the blender, I've got crock pot, I've got the food processor, can opener, so it's all off the counter. It's hidden away. Right. And on the center island, I've got uh, four electrical outlets, so I can place these electrical appliances here. So I those are the have a big pantry, and then the pantry I store the larger appliances like the uh, Instapot, the popcorn popper the bread machine. So I have yeah, another yeah. storage area for the larger appliances. And so those are all things though, that you're not using every day, right? Like yeah. you, you don't put your, are you a coffee drinker? See, that's the thing. Don't if you're, drink coffee. Uh, see, if you're not a coffee drinker, you don't understand that you never put your coffee pot away. <laughs> so it lives on the countertop. Um, we have another comment from Sheila. Um, hello everyone. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm an OT who consults in home accessibility for all. Oh, she has your book and she's met hey. you at the conferences. Thank you. A few years ago. Thanks for being here, Sheila. What else would you like us and our viewers to see? You mentioned well, your pantry. Well, we've got um, a side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer. The doors open all the way out. Right. right. These drawers come out really easily. They all have easy fronts so you can see what's in them and great lighting. What I really liked about these, I have very short arms and these shelves can come out so that I can reach things in the back a lot easier. Yes. And they're all adjustable in height. Um, very convenient for me so that I can get in here and have access. I cannot reach the top, but as you can see, what do we store up there? They're just bottles of water and bottles of soda. So it's something that I probably won't be accessing. All my that's, needs are from here on down. That's so funny because we, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we've been having these conversations, Rosemary and I, just for a, like, I don't know, a week maybe. And we've been talking about all the things that we have in common. And that is another thing that we have in common <laughs> is the soda and the beer are on the top shelf of my fridge because <laughs> I don't need to get to them. Yeah, uh, we, we have a water filtration system, reverse osmosis. So yeah. anytime I want to drink or, or use water for cooking, it's out of that faucet. Um, Macaulay Media is asking what floor coverings worked best in our respective kitchens. And what, um, what I'll do is I'll put my camera down here on my lap so that you can see we used um, vinyl plank, just luxury vinyl plank. Um, we wanted something that was very neutral and um, very durable. So slab on grade and uh, vinyl plank on top. That's what we did. Well, I've got hickory. I've got hardwood. It is uh, engineered hickory. It has a matte finish, so there's no glare. It's very durable. We have had, as I mentioned, over 3,000 people in here people in wheelchairs, power chairs, scooters, high heels, and we have nowhere at all. 
It is a wonderful product as a hickory is a very hard hardwood. Mm -hmm. We also installed it over recycled rubber mat, a very thin rubber mat, so that it's softer on your joints and quieter. So the house is basically all hardwood except for the bathrooms with mm -hmm. ceramic tile. Yeah, our whole house is um, the vinyl plank and um, except for the, the shower in the bathroom, which is tile. Yeah. Um, did you put bowling sealant on your hickory floor? Asks Mindy. No, it was pre-engineered with all the sealants pre necessary. Oh, ready to go. Finished and pre-finished. So everything came as planks and it was installed as a finished product. Nice. It is quite beautiful. Quite beautiful. Thank you. Um, we just have a couple of minutes left. I, I promised everyone we wouldn't be more than half an hour. I know everyone has other things they're probably planning on doing this evening. So if you have any more questions, please just um, drop them in the chat. I can be found at my website and that's juliesawchuk.ca. And I would very much love for you to subscribe to my YouTube. Um, I have a feeling Rosemary and I are going to be uh, meeting again virtually and we'd love to have you along as well. So if you subscribe to my YouTube, then you will get some notifications that um, we're gonna do this again. And you can watch again, share it with your friends. Um, and get in touch with us. And I'm going to put Rosemary's, um, I'm going to put Rosemary's, there we go, trying to do too many things at once, um, website up as well. And uh, I don't think I mentioned my books, but you can see in the background there, um, Build Your Space, it's the story about um, me and <laughs> our process of designing our own house. Um, all of the things that we learned along the way. So that is Build Your Space, available on my website. Um, if you know somebody who is dealing with a spinal cord injury, they can download for free the Roadmap to Recovery, which is my second book. And then um, my latest book is Building Better Bathrooms, obviously all about bathrooms. So maybe that's our next chat is we'll, we'll hang out in the bathroom together. I spend a lot of time talking to people um, from the bathroom, so it really wouldn't be that shocking to anybody to come and hang out with me in the bathroom. So thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you to Rosemary for hanging out in the kitchen and Mark, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, we have a few more comments before we go. Uh, uh, aging accessibility in place, so underrated and valued. Thank you, Emily. Next time, talk about your bathrooms. There we go. We've got requests. So I guess we'll see you guys again in the bathroom. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you for all watching. And thank you, Julie, for the idea and hosting tonight. For sure. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.